My first encounter at Bournemouth was really coming to watch the team play. So before I was ever um, involved with the club in any way, I, I came as a supporter, having moved down from uh, the Watford area uh, when I was, I think it was about 10 years old. Um, I was excited to have a football league club on our doorstep um, and came and watched and um, really enjoyed those first few experiences of watching the team play and, and yeah, developed my love from there. And then out of the blue one day, I got given a, a card from a scout who said it was a Bournemouth scout and um, they wanted me to come training. So that was sort of the very early stages of it. I mean, I was aware that the club were, were struggling financially and um, needed, needed the income of transfers. I think that was always, at that time, part of what happened at Bournemouth. If a player did well, he was going to be sold pretty quickly because they needed the money. I wanted to progress my career and, and try and play as high as I could, as quickly as I could. I was very, very ambitious. So it was a really tough thing to do to leave Bournemouth. I, was many, I came close many times earlier than that eventual move. Um, but that was the one that, um, that seemed right at the time. I learned a lot. Although I, I didn't really kick a ball for Portsmouth, I was watching a lot. I was analysing a lot from afar and a team that got promoted to the Premier League, stayed in the Premier League, was all done in, um, in a really good way from Harry and his team. So uh, that was a great experience. I think without the injuries, I would have stayed on the path of playing and um, the injuries forced me to look at the game differently. I knew I wouldn't be playing very long after the, the serious one I got at Portsmouth. I was well aware that my career was going to be cut short. I could feel it in my body. So I wouldn't say I naturally went into thinking about coaching at that age, but I was definitely looking at alternative routes to find employment in the game. I felt very isolated and alone, um, not through any fault of Portsmouth, but that, that was just the, the reality. My injury was a complicated one. I didn't get um, definitive answers on what my problem was for a, quite a long time. So I think when you're in that place, you do feel detached from the bubble that is football. And um, although I wouldn't have wanted it for myself at the time, actually probably in hindsight was a, a very good thing for me. Feeling a bit embarrassed, to be honest, because um, I wasn't sure how I was going to perform when I came back. If I was going to be able to perform, there's a lot of unknowns for me. I hadn't played football for two years and there was no underestimating the level. Although I was coming from a Premier League team to uh, a League One team, I hadn't kicked a ball for such a long time. So there's a little bit of feeling that I hope I'm not going to let everyone down here. Invested a lot of money. People have put their money in their pockets for me to return. They're imagining the old me and a different player was coming back. So I just did, I just wanted to try and justify that really. It was further evidence for me that you know, the Bournemouth people were unbelievably loyal, unbelievably um, generous, and they must have liked something about me in the first period. So um, it did strengthen our relationship in my mind. Um, maybe not once they'd seen me play in their mind, um, but thankfully I found a different way to repay them. I needed an opportunity, I needed someone to um, see that I could have a, an impact on a coaching team, that I had ideas that were um, going to be of substance for someone. So I remember going to scout a game for him, he asked, well he actually didn't ask me, he sort of asked the room at the time and I was in there and the club had no money, no money for scouts, so he said, can someone go to this game? I did, I, I did a report for him. Um, I actually ended up playing in the game that I reported on, um, which was quite bizarre, but um, we won the game and I think he valued that, that feedback that I'd given him. And I think that was the start where he thought maybe I could offer him something. I was very fortunate in that respect. I didn't have time to dwell on the fact that I was out of the game, um, where you, you know, you're left isolated and you have time to think, overanalyze stuff. I, I was straight into a new employment and a totally new job. So I had to learn everything from the, the bottom upwards. and. I knew I was starting at the very bottom. I had no problem getting my teeth into the work and trying to learn to be a coach. And I knew very, very early it was a totally different profession. You know, I, I, I could never use my playing career as a to something to stand up against because it wasn't much of a career to do that with. So I then had to earn the respect of the players uh, through my coaching. There were brilliant days because you're you're learning by doing. You know, and that's where I, what I was doing. You know, I, I didn't take too many sessions in the early days under Kevin. I, you know, I'll be honest, I, I took a back seat and watched and learned him and Rob Newman. Kevin was very hands on anyway, and I think he wanted to do the majority of the coaching. So it was brilliant from my side to, to watch, learn, listen. Uh, those were 
very, very valuable days for me, um, although they're very early and I was building my opinions of what I wanted to do. Um, I'm very thankful to Kevin and Rob. So when Kevin and Rob and I got the sack, I was then given another chance to go into the centre of excellence. So leading all the, all the kids from the age of, say, I think at the time it was eight to 16. And I did that job for about a month. And although it was only 30 days, I learned so much in those 30 days. I was coaching eight-year-olds suddenly and 14-year-olds at different ages every night. And for me, I'd probably say that was key because I had to go back to teaching people how to pass the ball and to control the ball. So really stripping it back to basics. And that was a really enjoyable time. I remember my phone ringing and it was Adam Murray who I'd been dealing with. And uh, I was like, right, this is it. It's, it's gonna be goodbye here. And it was the opposite. He said, right, we wanna offer you the job permanently, which, yeah, took me by surprise and um, ultimately gave me a lot of respect for Adam because he took a very brave decision, a hugely brave decision at that time. I thought he was mad. I tried to get him to change his mind and say, no, 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 I think you need someone else, but he was adamant and, yeah, very, very fortunate that he was the man in charge. I remember it being a real roller coaster, which is probably a really good taster of management because some days we were up, but most days it felt like we were getting knocked down. I remember chucking away leads at, at Lincoln, um, some tough defeats in amongst some good wins, but it never felt like we were getting there. Always felt we were still too far away to, to get to where we wanted to be. And of course, everyone knows it was only the second from last game when we actually got safe, but it never felt like we had done it until we had done it. And again, what a great grounding in management. What a great course for me within six months to get a taste of everything that management can throw at you. It seemed like we were getting chucked quite a few obstacles in our way. <clears throat> um, the transfer embargo was a, a tough one because I, I felt we needed to strengthen as most managers do. And I wasn't actually told how long the transfer embargo was going to be on for. So to start with, I think it was a week, then it was two weeks, then it was a month. And before you knew it, it was um, near enough the whole season. So I think that was, I, I've said many times in interviews, I think it was a turning point for me because I then learned that I've just got to get the best out of what I have. I think it took me a month to sort of get my head around, oh, this embargo is not coming off. And then once I knew that that was that that was where we were. I was able to concentrate with the players and go, right, let's, let's maximize what we have. And again, probably a brilliant thing for me uh, to happen so early in my management career that um, getting the best out of the resources you have is, is the challenge really that we all face. You need good players and I felt we had good players, but I think it was creating an environment where the players felt they were fighting for a, an objective and a goal. And I think we felt that running through us when we were staying up, we, we had a point to prove we had we were sort of fighting against the, the authorities, the football world. That's how it felt at the time. We were fighting against the, the unfairness of our situation. And that brought a real togetherness um, and an inspirational group that, that led the club to safety. I think the next season was built on something slightly different because I think the anger went. But then the, the team spirit remained. And then, of course, you're fighting for something positive, a promotion to the next level. And um, the basis of what we do now, I think, was all formed in that, in that second year. I learned the key to this job is getting the best out of, of what you have the, in the here and now. You can, you can moan about your transfer budget or your, the, the facilities you have to bring in new players or whatever it is that you think is the obstacle in your way. But the reality is you can still find a way to get around those things if you, you're smart with what you do. And that built my, my mindset really of being on the training pitch every day, being the last person off the training pitch um, working with the players on a one-to-one -one basis, really getting to know them and, and to try and understand their games and what weaknesses they have and trying to improve them. And it's, it's, never, it's never changed to this day. I'm still exactly the same. I think due to my playing career, not being particularly successful, never winning anything. I always felt my career was short of the true success that I, I absolutely craved. So I think that in turn was a good thing for my mental side. I, I never took things for granted. I always maybe looked at things slightly pessimistically um, at the start because I, I'd been used to sort of something going wrong on my playing career. So I sort of assumed that would be the same in my management career. And I think that that fueled me to um, 
chase success on a on a sort of an obsessive level. I'm still here doing it now. I turned down a lot of jobs and I think I'd got to the point where everyone from the outside I think was questioning my motivation and I thought I probably got caught in that trap of wanting to please the outside opinion. Um, that's not to say that um, things had changed at Bournemouth a little bit, it had become a little bit more difficult to manage certain things. So I think the timing was probably right on a, on a whole different um, few levels. And I felt Burnley was, when you look at the location, far enough away for me to fully commit to the job. That was one of my worries and everyone was saying, well, go to London because you can come back and it's not too far, you can keep your life here. And for me, that was never an option. I think I'd learned from management that I was going to be 24 seven and I needed to commit needed to move my family to a new area so Burnley attracted me on that side and also the fact that there was a real challenge on there you know they'd fallen out of the Premier League the brief was to try and get them back into the Premier League um, an ambitious club very stable club really good people and I think that was another real swaying point when I met the team there the directors there they were seen really really good people and I think they were the the final thing that made me decide to go there my family were settled um, off the pitch, I had no no issues at all. As I said, the people there treated me superbly, no issues on that side. Results hadn't been exactly what I wanted, but I knew when I went there, it wasn't gonna be a quick turnaround. I knew that it would be a struggle. You know, I had to try and rebuild the team. Um, Burnley were ready for that. That was my, that's why in part I was the one selected because I was young and, and they wanted to build a younger team. So. Uh, we did a lot of the work. We felt we were on the right track, but it never quite took off. We never got the consistent run of results we wanted. Ultimately, the reason why I decided to leave was because of the death of my mum. And uh, that, was the, that was the change that brought me back home. Going back, although I'd done it in my playing career, wasn't something that I chased. Um, it was more just a few pieces fell into place that, that made it not really an option for me, but something I had to do. So it was, it was quite bizarre. The timing of it with where I was in my, my private life, as I say, made it a must for me. And that's why I know there was a lot of people questioning it. But for me, it was something bigger than, than football that um, made me follow that path.